get out. We break it? Open right. the door. No. Get so. Now get out. Get out. Come out of the car. Turn the car off. I have cancer. Please call them oh, right now. I will rip my arms out. I'm not going in this car. When you think about painful traffic stops, you probably imagine people engaging in physical altercations. And you probably wonder who gets the short end of the stick, the cops or the suspects. However, we like to mix things up here at The Hidden Files. You'll see people having mental breakdowns, emotional breakdowns, people having seizures, and faking them as well. But that's not all. By the time you've watched this video till the end, you will have encountered versions of pain that you never expected to see in a video about law enforcement. So, get your popcorn ready, and let's go! We start out with a very unusual traffic stop with a very unusual suspect. In March 2023, officers were dispatched in reference to a supposed drunken driver. As it will soon become painfully obvious, this particular driver will really be a handful, so to speak. Oh man! No. Hi. I'm Officer Stitt with Thurkers Lake PD. Um, someone called in, um, they were complaining about your music being kind of loud from your car. Really? I was yeah. just here like 30 seconds. You were just here for like 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay. No, not 30 seconds. Like 15 minutes or so. Okay, you've been here for like 15 minutes? Yeah, no. I live here. Over here. 10 Do you live over here? Yeah. Okay. Did you got a, an ID on you, ma'am? I do. Okay, can I see that real quick? What did they say over the radio? Oh. Oh, they were just uh, giving me your information. I gave them your, your license plate. They're saying it was coming back to you. How much have you had to drink tonight? Um, a lot. A lot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I just drive around and do this. Where were you uh, planning on going? No, just here. Just here? Yeah. You were just gonna <laughs> drive around a little bit? Uh, no, I wasn't even driving. I was just listening to music. Okay. Okay. Well, even though it is refreshing to see a driver finally admit they're drunk, this situation is not okay at all. This suspect is obviously extremely drunk, and she's sitting in the driver's seat of a car that's running. That's DUI right there, but she obviously is not aware of that, and it doesn't end there. There's one more giant hole in the plot of her story, and the officer's about to point to it. Why are you, because uh, you're kind of parked in the middle of the entrance. I know, no, yeah, and I, I feel, I work here too, I'm darn it. Okay, you work here? Yeah. Okay. When, like I know you already said you had a lot to drink, but you, like, can you give me an estimate how much how much you've had? Um, oh no, no, a thousand drinks. A thousand <laughs> drinks. Okay. No, no, no. I'm just. Okay. Uh, so what where, now? Where were you coming from? No, and I feel like oh god. So can you do me a favor and step out of the car? I'm just going to run you through some. No, uh, I don't want to step out. You don't want to step out of the car? Okay, well, at this point, I'm not asking you to step out. So I, I need you to step out of the car. Can I park it in a better place from here? I'm, no, you can't, you can't drive it away right now. I'm going to need you to step out of the car, okay? Okay, well, I'm not asking you. I, I need you to step out of the car. You've, you've told me yourself that you're drunk. You've said that you've been drinking tonight. So I'm going to need you to step out of the car, okay? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you to do it. And if you don't do it, we're going to have to take you out ourselves, and I don't want to have hey, to do well, that. Don't take me out in a bad way. Just let me sit here, here, okay, please. Drake, can you hear those? All right, perfect, thank you. And then can you just step out? I don't want to step out. You don't want to step out, okay. Well, I think the cop's in a pretty bad place at the moment. The lady's drunk and she could get out of hand. As you might have seen in our previous videos, when a suspect resists, getting them in and out of a car is a huge problem, even when the suspect is on the smaller side. So dealing with someone as big as Hannah seems like a daunting task. So far, she doesn't seem willing to cooperate at all. More likely, she's about to pass out on them, which would then make her even heavier. Let's see which way this goes. All right, Hannah, can you just step out of the car for me, please? No, I don't want to step out. Okay. No. Nope. So are you going to make me take you out myself? No, don't take me out. I'm okay, fine. Okay, well, fine. I need you to step out of the car, Hannah, okay? Okay. I'm not stepping out, though. It's I, so I, cold. Hannah, I need you to step out, okay? I, I'm not stepping out. Okay, Hannah, I've already told you. If what, you don't, why am I stepping out? Because you've already told me that you've been drinking. I know, so then what? So then I'm going to run you through some tests to make sure that you're good to drive, okay? I know. I'm not going to run through the tests. You're not going to no. run through any tests? Okay, no. then I'm going to have to make a decision based on my observations and what you've told me tonight. So just running through these tests, it helps me make a better decision. Hannah, do you think you should be driving right now or Who be is operating this? No. another vehicle? 
Oh, no, I don't. You don't think you should be operating I'm one? right here. No, I do feel I'm fine. How much have you had to drink tonight? No, I just, I just don't know what to say. Well, just the truth. Not enough. Not enough? No, not enough. No. The officers keep digging for information that will make their case stronger. And poor old Hannah keeps digging her hole deeper and deeper. It sounds like she's going through a rough time. And I do feel sorry for her because there's no way getting arrested and going to jail will help her feel any better. Her extraction from the car is inevitable at this point, and even though the two officers attempt to have her peacefully come out, their patience is growing thinner by the minute. What now? We told you, this is your chance. Oh, either you step out of the car. No, I don't want to. Okay, but you don't have a choice. It's either stepping out of the car or we're gonna drag you out of the car. No, Those are your two now. options. Do you understand that? No, let's no, just no, let no, 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 no. We're done with that. It's either you step out of the car I know, or we're going to drag annoying. you out of the car. It's Those annoying, are your two options. I know that's my options now. Okay, I which, don't have options. which option are you going to take? Okay, you're not going to step out of the car for us? I don't know what to do. Well, you could just step out, but that's not going to happen, obviously. So, whether they wanted it or not, it's time for these cops to do some manual labor. Let's see how that plays out. Oh, yeah, my no, lawyer, stop, yeah, stop, no, stop, no, stop, no, stop, stop, stop. Last chance. Either step out of the car nope. or we're going to pull you out. No. Nope. You're not going to step out? Okay. Wait, Hannah. stop. No, you're done. Chill. You are no, under arrest right gonna. now. Get out of the car. Hannah, Hannah get out of Hannah. the car. No. Hannah. Oh, I am so strong. Hannah, get out of the car. Oh, stop. let's see Hannah, you guys stop. struggle. Oh, oh. Same one you want to down here. oh, so much struggle. Go ahead. Hannah, stop. Oh, resisting. I've worked hard. I work hard. You're under arrest. Oh. Get on your stomach. Get on your stomach. You no. Nope. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hand behind your back. Put your hand behind your back. Stop resisting. Put your hand behind Not your back. Going to. Yes. No. Oh. Oh. You got tough. See, come on, I'm seeing. At that point, a third officer arrives and asks his colleagues if they need help. The three of them manage to put the cuffs on and get her to sit. A job well done, but just partially. The toughest part is yet to come. Now they need to pick her up and put her in the car. And judging from the way she's acted so far, there's no way she's going to do it willingly. The picking up part was easy because she didn't like sitting on the cold asphalt. But let's see what she thinks about getting in the police car. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. You want nope. to sit down? Nope. I'm going in there. Oh, you can't make me go in there. No, what? No. Nope. Hannah, you're going to be going in there. No, nope, I'm not. Ready? Fight? Yeah, I'm ready. No. Nope. So you're going to fight and kick us? No, I want my purse. I want my we'll stuff get that. in there. We'll get that for you. No, I'm not going in there. Yep. So you are going in there. No, if you kick us, I'm not. So hit us no, through anything like that. Just like I said before, you're getting more charges. I will fight to the end. Then you'll get and more I charges. Strong. Then charge me up. And then you'll go to county for a night. I've been in town. I get it. Okay. Hannah here seems to know that her weight and size are on her side. If she resists, there's no way they can push her inside the vehicle. So she has the feeling that she has the upper hand in this, and she seems to be enjoying it. But before they attempt to try and get her in the police car, a supervisor arrives and tries to get her to cooperate. No, I'm not going in there. Okay, what's going on? So this is our supervisor. Hi. Oh, it's a big boy. <laughs> what's going on? DUI arrest and then. She wouldn't get out of the car. No, not DUI arrest. arrest. Yes, DUI arrest. Yeah. Okay, so there's a there's an arrest. Okay, so what else? Then we pull her out of car. She resists getting out of the car. Okay. Now she says she won't get in back of our squad Are you car. Hurt? No, Anybody hurt? Are you hurt? No. No. Okay. No, no, we'll, yeah. I'll undo it now. That's not gonna happen right now. Okay. Well, then I will fight to the death till I do that. Okay. Do you understand what that means? Yeah. Do you understand that we'll, we'll, we'll end up putting you in a wrap? Yeah, I'm ready. I am. I'm so pumped. Give me the phone. 
now. Just please. All right, just let me call, make one phone call. One phone call right now? Yep. Okay, we'll make it happen. If it's gonna Give keep my you from, phone. If it's going to keep you from fighting us, we'd rather do that. Will you cooperate if we make this phone call? I know, you're a big boy. I like to fight you. No, I'm kidding. I'm I know kidding. You are. I know you are. I'm kidding. I know you're kidding. I know you're kidding. I know you're kidding. So the officers agree to give her the phone call, and she agrees to cooperate. But the call goes to voicemail, and suddenly the deal's off. It's time to put her in the car. Now if it was me, I'd probably get my taser ready and be ready to use it at the first sign of trouble. I haven't seen the rest of this video yet, but I kinda doubt these cops want to go that far. What do you think? Do they resort to using tasers or not? And make sure you let me know in the comments if you got it right. But now, let's see some action. No, nope. you ready to go to see? No, nope, not see. Well, you see. But you said we had a deal. I know, I'm not taking the deal. No, nope, not going in there. No, just let me, just get a minute. Okay, open the door. No. Nope. No, you get, we're gonna give it a minute, but you're gonna go inside the car. Oh, we'll, we'll give it a minute. We'll give it a minute, but then it's time to go. And then what? And then you're gonna get processed, and then you, and then you can bond out. And bond out? No one's bonding me out. You don't have the money to bond out? No way. Okay. Well, what do you suggest? I don't know. What do you guys suggest? We're gonna Just let me go. And no. Walk Put her inside the car. Nope. Come on, Hannah. Don't fight. Come on. I'm not going in here. I will f rip my arms out. I'm not going in this car. You can't make me. You can't make me. Oh, I am good. I am strong. Okay, the first attempt failed, but the cops have a backup plan for these situations, and it's called the wrap. But if they think putting it on will be easy, they've got another thing coming. What's that? We're gonna wrap you. We're gonna wrap. Yep. Yeah, little thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, little thing is gonna help me. My tits are bigger than this thing. Okay. It's gonna go around my stomach. <laughs> Knees, right? You guys are joking. Way, way. Knees. All right, I'll be very confined. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, come on, get up. Stand no, up. Yeah, go, no, no, do this. Let's see how this works. So what about scoop it up? Scoop it up. Okay, yeah. Put the harness over her Oh. Oh, the spit harness? What am I want spinning now? Yeah, the officers were lucky, I guess, because Hannah did not kick or resist with force. In fact, she smiled and commented on what they were doing. She basically just kicked back, relaxed, and made fun of the cops. But strangely, she really didn't do it offensively. However, when they actually tried to get her in, things got very painful. Or maybe she was faking it. This is for the animals, so I know you guys are supposed to lift me up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think All they're right. they're they're you throw me in there? Oh, there's no way! There's no way! Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, stop, 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 stop. There's no way, there's no way. Oh, f***. Lean forward. No way, my Lean for No, my shoulder's out. Jesus, help. No, no, no. No, this is... Not the way you do this! Oh, shit. Hannah continues wincing in pain as the officers remove the handcuffs. But that's when the situation became more serious. She supposedly started having a seizure. Even though we won't show any explicit images, be warned. For people who've had experience with epilepsy, this may be triggering. <laughs> What's going on, girl? Yeah. What's going on? What's going on, girl? What's going on? Hey, Hannah, breathe. Hannah. Hannah. Just look breathe. at me. Look Recovery at me. position. Look at me. Yeah, put her on her side. Yeah, put her on her side. Lean her towards you, Nika. The officers immediately called for EMS. They swiftly positioned Hannah to her side and kept calmly talking to her. That's precisely what needs to be done in case of a seizure. I personally have experience with people suffering from epilepsy, and I can tell you that the grunting noises she was making are very indicative of a seizure. 
This wasn't a big seizure, and she recovered quickly. But the only question now is, was she faking it? Was she faking all of it? No, I, let me get up. No, 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 no why am I sitting here? Because you passed out. Okay, I know, I didn't pass out. Did I don't know what I'm, no, I didn't. I let me help, help me up, help me up. You want to help me up? Yeah. We introduced the car. Oh. No, no, let me get over here myself. Okay. So I guess there's nothing wrong with your shoulders then. Your sweatshirt? Oh, oh my god. Hey, we need to take you in the ambulance and evaluate you. No, I'm not going in the ambulance. No? I'm just going to walk home. You're not going home. Uh, you're being arrested. You're not going home. Oh. You're being arrested. Yeah. All right, so what now? <laughs> this stuff's here. These guys are going to evaluate you, okay? Because you act like you had a seizure, so therefore we can't take a chance. Okay, so that's why you're on the floor. We put you in that position that you're in, right? And we play it safe, we call it them. But then miraculously, you came out of the seizure like it was nothing. Okay. So now you're playing games with these guys. We called them out from the firehouse for you. It doesn't really matter that she came out of it quickly. Smaller seizures often happen that way, and the patient doesn't have any recollection of it ever happening. But the officer here is clearly in doubt, and rightfully so, because it feels like Hannah was trolling them all night long. In the end, she did end up in the wrap and was thrown inside the patrol vehicle, even though she thought that would never happen. She was transported to jail and charged with DUI and misdemeanor resisting arrest. What do you think? Was she faking the seizure? I think not, but she's a quirky lady nonetheless. Our next case is just as strange as the previous one. The incident took place on September 17, 2022. What started as a simple traffic infraction kept building and building until it escalated into a physical confrontation. It all started when a police officer with the Edmond Police Department saw a silver vehicle with a broken taillight. As soon as the driver saw him, he turned into a nearby parking lot and started pretending he wasn't being pulled over. How you doing? Pretty good. The reason I'm pulling you over, your third brake light's out. My third brake light? Yeah, the one the, Yeah. No, it works pretty good. Uh, no, it doesn't. Huh. See your ID, please? I don't have one. Okay. You don't have one at all? I haven't violated anything or heard the First Amendment, so I don't need to share your ID. You actually stopped there, then when I pulled in here, then you pulled me over. So I've been Five, eight, seven, Can you start me another? Yeah, go ahead and start another unit. Okay, your third brake light is out. And perfect enough, my supervisor's pulling up. All right, that's cool. Cool. Thank you. So you have no ID on you. Are you refusing to identify yourself? I don't talk to police. So. Okay. Well, easy enough. Go ahead and put your car in park for me. It's in park. Okay, cool. The suspect seems pretty sure of himself. He's acting like he's got the officer committing a violation of some code or rule. But this seems pretty straightforward to me. The officer noticed an infraction and followed the car, probably to make sure his observation was correct. And once the car pulled over, he initiated the traffic stop. I'm interested to see if the driver is perhaps trying to hide something. Huh? That's your back. It's good. All right, go ahead and step out of the car for me. No. Okay, so this is how this is going to go, okay? I have a legal right to remove you from the vehicle. How? It's case law from the Supreme Court. No, it's not. Sir, it it 100% is. You have been I'm pulled over for, for, you've been pulled over for a traffic violation. Can lot. you please let me finish? Dude, I've been recording this okay. whole time. You have a third break. Hit your brakes. Hit your brakes. So are you refusing to exit the vehicle? Yeah. Okay. If you don't exit the vehicle, I'm going to place you under arrest, okay? For what? For resisting, because you're not resisting following my- arrest? Yeah, because I'm giving, you a legal, arrest I'm giving you a legal- I'm giving you a legal order. What am I resisting arrest from? I'm giving you a legal order. Property. What am I resisting arrest from? Okay. I've, I'm giving you a legal- I'm giving you a legal order I, I to exit this vehicle. And then you pull me over. I'm giving you a legal order to exit this vehicle. Lights. I'm giving you a legal I was order in the to parking lot when it. It doesn't matter. You committed lights. a traffic violation I did on not the road. Any traffic violation. You have a third brake light out. That is a traffic violation, an equipment violation. You can step out of the vehicle right now, I don't or have you will to. go. I do not have. To, Are we getting another unit over that's here? That's my First Amendment right. Okay. So you I obviously don't understand lot. how the First I Amendment. I stopped in the parking lot. Then you turned on your lights. Guys, remember one thing. 
In the majority of these cases, if an officer is this hell-bent on getting you out of the car, he will eventually get you out. If you're sure your rights have been violated, you can contest this in court and even sue the police department. But there's no use in resisting, and I have a feeling that this guy is not about to yield. He thinks he knows the law, but it seems that he got his amendments mixed up. Well, at least he's polite. How are you doing, sir? Good. So, so okay. you just turned on your lights when I was in the parking lot. Okay. So, I have a That's first a amendment It's right. a traffic stop. For what? I was already an infra- in the parking an infraction lot. infraction based on, on the lights. roadway, sir. Say again, sir? An infraction that was happened on the roadway. No, that's not what happened. I pulled into the parking lot, then he turned on his lights. Yeah, because that, I'm that can, near that can a work drinking that. establishment. You guys saw me pull over here. So, because I missed my turn, then you turn on your lights after I pulled into sure. the parking lot because I missed my turn. All right. Now, all of a sudden, it's all this whole thing. So, you're trying to violate my First Amendment. That's not what's now, happening. I reported the amendment, whole time. Your First I, Amendment is a freedom of speech, sir. So First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, et cetera, et cetera. Go ahead. So I do not have to. So you don't you don't think your third brake lights just, out? Just call the if you guys are gonna be pushing like this. No, we're I would recommend that I ask for a supervisor. This is a supervisor. I'm right here, sir. He's a and lieutenant. If, all right. So if, if what I'm so, saying is me, resonating with y'all, I'm gonna ask for you guys to call the FBI. No. Okay. Yes, here, straight up. Listen, their sir. number listen. is two nine seven. It's not hard. Listen, this is laughable. Imagine if the FBI was called out for every miscellaneous traffic infraction that happens. That's just hilarious and completely implausible. The two officers try to explain things to the suspect, but he's just not listening. He's still trying to figure a way to get out of this. Okay. Okay. We've, ex- we've explained it now. No, we've, we've explained it a few different times. Okay, we good. Just... You guys are trying to violate my rights. Okay, go ahead and step out. No. Okay. Well, you're under arrest, okay? I'm not under arrest. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. I'm not getting out. You guys are violating. Hey, you can't just get out of the car. Get out of the car. Step out. Step out. Step out. We're going to force you out if you don't. Step out of the car. I'm not going to arrest. Whoa, easy. Step out. 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 Step Hey, move this leg for me. There you go. You're good now. This went pretty much as I expected. The guy didn't really seem too combative, but they did have to forcefully extract him from the vehicle. Oh, and nobody called the FBI. The question now is, what happens next? Are you gonna Are you gonna stand up and walk to the car? We yeah, man. Carry you? You guys need. Well, that would have been helpful like five uh, minutes ago, sir. I've been pretty reasonable all the whole time. No, not at all. Absolutely not. What's your name? Another side split. Alright, I got you, sir. I'm just holding it. Here, hold on, my shoulder's caught on your chair right here. Yeah, just tear the shirt there. Well, if you don't have here, I got you. Even though he said he'd walk to the car, the suspect had to be carried. On the road to jail, he tried giving verbal commands to inanimate objects, like the body camera and the radio. So weird. Check this out. Body camera? I'm 1015. Call the FBI. Long time. Our city jail Dispatch, starting is 3 Dispatch, call FBI. You guys aren't going to beat me or abuse me anymore. We beat so, you and abused you in the first place. I'd like someone to, to call the FBI, please. You can call them later. It's all good. You guys lack integrity and you guys lie. It's cool. I got you, sir. Cool. So it's a video. Video's got you, bro. Yeah, I know. If you just want to listen, but you don't have to go through any of that. I did listen. You did not listen. No, no, I did listen, but I was trying to enforce my own personal rights. You guys didn't like that because in your book, Nick, are all guilty. That's right, Lieutenant. So your cop said my brake light was out? It wasn't. Pull his dash cam or his body cam. So either way, I know what time it is. Okay. Yeah, you have a good day. Are you the cop that shot that Isaiah Lewis kid? I bet you are. If not, you're complicit with him. Yeah, so So, and I just mean that to the rank and not just to the person. Because I do understand the stress. You're 
you're all over the place, sir. If you hadn't heard about it yet, Isaiah Lewis was a 17-year-old boy who had a mental episode and started running in the street naked and unarmed. He was shot by an officer who did not engage his body camera. The trial is ongoing, but the officer was denied immunity. Still, I think that's a hell of an accusation to throw at this point. That wasn't called for at all, don't you think? Charges will be DUI, resisting. Yeah, it's a, there's a couple, so go ahead. And so what about falsifying? Stop, sir. I'm trying to talk. Oh, no, bro. You're the one falsifying. So Your body came DUI, body. That's that bullshit. resisting, Call the FBI. Hey, driving without a valid license. Great. Uh, equipment shit. violation, and more shit. expired tag, more shit. no proof of insurance. Shit. You never asked me for proof of insurance. You didn't give me a chance to. So, um, you never asked. that you should be it. All right, Mr. Riles, I've got something to give to you, okay? Um, and just so you know, for your peace of mind, I just watched my body camera footage, okay? And you can see that your third brake light is not functioning and then you flip on your cargo light to make it look like your white light shining back as your third brake light. I just wanted you to know that for your peace of mind because you want to know my body camera was functioning. It was on, it did catch that. Can you show me that video? Not all painful traffic stops end in just physical pain. Our next clip shows a suspect who appears to be suffering from mental issues. And by the time this is over, the officers will likely have mental issues from having to listen to this guy. Okay, turn the car off. Call 911. I got a, I got a 52 coming. I, I don't have a weapon. Do not come loaded right now. We're directly behind. Call 911. I need an ambulance right now, sir. All right. Call 911 right, right now. Come out of the car. Call them right now. All right, come out of the car. Turn the car off. I have cancer. Please call them right, right now. Turn the car off. Did he just say he has cancer? My, oh, my. This is going to be even weirder than I thought. The man in the car is 25-year-old Jeffrey Lovatovich. On August 14th, 2022, he was at the Cinemark Theater at the Lewis Juliet's Mall. At around 1 a.m., he supposedly pulled down his pants and started screaming. Then he got in the car and pretended to be fast and furious in the parking lot. Right about that time, someone called the cops on him. Uh, what? Turn the car off. I'm not. It's going to break. My car is broken. OK, turn it off. Oh, I got a bit of music. I can't turn it off. I can't hear you. Step out of the car. Who are you? Step out of the car. Are Join you a police, police officer? Yes. Come out What's of the car. your name? Officer Lumber. What's your rank? Officer Lumber. How many years have you been? Ten What's years. your rank? I have FBI in my family. What is your name? Officer Lumber. I'm sick. I need Come an ambulance. Don't car. touch me. Jesus. It's only been a minute, and I want to tase him already. This guy's annoying beyond belief. He has to be either suffering from a mental illness or under the influence of some heavy drugs or loads of alcohol or all of those combined and then seasoned with an insane sense of entitlement. The officer opens the door, but that's as far as it goes because Jeffrey is not cooperating at all. Who are you? Who are you? Officer Lumber. Do you want to see an ambulance or not? I need one right now. Okay, get out of the car. Come on I'm not here. getting out until it's here. Okay, come on out. I'm not getting out until it's here. Okay. It's not funny, bro. Get away from me. I'm sick. Okay, hey, come on. Come on out of the car. I was dude. in the army. I was in the Marine Corps, dude. I don't give a Get away from me. I'm You're trying, weird. I'm I don't like Marines. I'm trying to help you, dude. Y'all are f***ing weird. Marines are f***ing weird, man. All right, hey, come on. F***ing MS-13 is trying to kill me, bro. A second chance. They're trying to f***ing kill me and my whole family, dude. So it would seem that my d comment was on the spot. Mara Salvatrucia, commonly known as MS-13, is an international criminal gang that originated in Los Angeles, California in the 1980s. Over the years, the gang got involved in drug smuggling, prostitution, human smuggling, murder, and extortion, among other illegal activities. I think this guy is just paranoid. If MS-13 wanted to get him, they would have done it already. On the other hand, the suspect says the state is also trying to kill him and that someone called the cops on him eight times already. But realistically, you really can't believe a thing that he says. He's obviously completely delusional. Watch this. Click or tap now to learn more. Features require a galaxy Why, because I'm Muslim? Leave me alone. Leave me the alone. Go call your FBI on me.
Go call the f***ing like FBI. Like these. Right, hey man, There's just come no on out and talk to me. Hell no, where's the f***ing ambulance? Where's the f***ing ambulance? Right, hey dude, we're just gonna take you out of No, you're gonna drive me to my apartment and either put me to sleep or put me in a hospital right now. Well, I'm sure these officers would enjoy putting this guy to sleep and in the hospital. Just not the way he imagined it. Lucky for him, they have body cams, so they have to be on their best behavior. You probably noticed other officers arriving at the scene, but it'll take some time before they manage to get this guy out. No, do not touch me or you all go to jail for the rest of your lives. What's your, what's your name, man? I'm not telling you my name. You want to know my rank? I was an E3 in the U.S. Army. I'm a Canadian resident and I'm an American. I'm a refugee. Hey, listen. Where are they? Where the f are they? I don't give a shit. Are you guys paramedics? No. Where the f is the ambulance? No, I f***ing smoked a cigarette. Because I'm Native American and I hate this f***ing country. Everyone's f***ing crazy. My whole family has f***ing cancer. Hey, take a breath. I know f*** you. F*** you both. I don't like any of you. I'm closing the door right now. Let me close the door. I'm bipolar. Listen, what? This is getting changed. There's no funny place in the door. I was in the fucking army. I served the fucking country just like your fucking ass did. But I got hurt. You see these scars? You see all these fucking scars? That's from the fucking military, mother. Even if there is a scuffle, somehow I don't really see this guy putting up much of a fight. The question is, how long will the cops let him do this? Because it seems to me the situation keeps escalating. Listen, listen. No, you leave me the They alone. said you, you were sitting next to them in the movie theater and you told the guy if he wants to buy T DXT or some type of I toy. was f***ing joking. And Mr. T is f***ing with me all the f***ing time. Anyone can say it. I had cops call to me six times and they f***ing stayed. You know how many people lie to get people in trouble? You know how many people lie to me in the army? I hate this Country. I hate this country. Okay, can you get out and talk to them now? They're right I here. hate this <laughs> country. There's criminals. There's 30 fugitives in Chicago. You want to Sorry, I'm a veteran. I, I have the right to remain silent. Good night, guys. Hey, man. If you my phone, that's government property. Do you want to go up to the hospital for anything, man? You all harassing me and you broke my arm. Remember that. Jeffrey calmed down after that last fiery exchange, but he made up a story about the cops breaking his arm, and he still didn't want to get out of the car. It was obvious that the officers would have to extract him sooner or later, so let's make it sooner. Hey, listen, man. Are you going to see Go ahead and step outside, okay? No, my arm is broken. My arm is broken. Don't worry, he's faking it. This is not what a seizure looks like. That woman we saw previously, that looked more like a seizure. This is just theater, like everything else Jeffrey said or did that evening. One might think this is a psychotic episode caused by d abuse, but I don't think so. Look at how he seamlessly stopped having a fit. We're gonna grab them. Sit back. Why? Put your feet in the car. Right now you're all around. For what? Put your feet in the car. Ow. 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 Ow.
Ow. I'm just moving because my arm is literally broken, guys. You're lucky it's not worse. Yo, guys, you got everything? Do not take me to her house. Do not take me to the witch's house. Do not take me to that address. So they all th thought I was supposed to be smarter than them and better than them, but it, I ended up on crutches because I'm accident prone, as you can see with my stupid seizure. I wasn't trying to like fake a seizure. I actually used to have many seizures as a kid. So whenever I get in trouble, because I've only been in trouble like this one other time in my whole life. And I was like 15 at the time, right? And my mom called the cops on me because she thought I was with my sister. It turns out that I had an eating disorder. You know what an eating disorder is, right? This guy's even crazier than I thought. This sounds like a tactic psychiatrist use when you're supposed to say whatever comes to your mind. Well, Jeffrey's mind seems to be a really strange place. He was arrested and charged with obstructing, resisting a peace officer, as well as reckless driving. And in case you were wondering about how much is true of what he was saying, this is what he said on the ride back. I'm, I'm halfway lying, right? But I'm halfway telling the truth. Well, let's hope Jeffrey gets the help he obviously needs. But now it's time for something even more cringy, sovereign citizens. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for people who stand up to oppression and fight for their rights. I support that, 100%. But this is something completely different. This is people making something up and getting a bunch of other people to follow them. Not only that, but they then expect the rest of society to accept their fantasy. Well, these Florida cops aren't buying it. This incident happened on a Saturday when a couple of deputies pulled over a vehicle with strange tags. It's gonna be a Hallen and Catalina. Uh, it's a blue Ford truck displaying some kind of sovereign citizen looking tag. Can you start us a second, please? It says post stops. the Union Treaty. Geneva con Convention neutrals, Neutral Zone Transport Vehicle. That's not how this works. Hey boss, how you doing? Not too bad, deputy of the sheriff's office. I just got pulled over. Hey, so the reason why I'm stopping you boss, I didn't recognize the tag that was on your vehicle. Yeah. Okay, do you have your driver's license registration with you? There you go. I got the paperwork right here. Where's the paperwork at, Michelle? Here. All right. Now, don't get your hopes up. If this is the first time you see a sovereign citizen being pulled over, let me clue you in. These people are a loose group of anti-government activists and conspiracy theorists that have this weird interpretation of the legal system. Apparently, none of the laws apply to them. They usually don't carry any IDs, their vehicles are not insured or registered, and most importantly, they believe they can get away with it. Oftentimes, suspects immediately call someone on the phone to give them instructions. And that's just what this guy did. It's where? Yeah, I'm oh. Here, she it's on speaker. Yeah, okay, where's your driver's license, boss? That's where it is. No, I don't need my window now. I'm sorry, so do you have a driver's license? Yeah, we're right there. Okay, there's what's your name, boss? I don't see your it's name right. on here. Can you point it to me? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. not how this works. Where's your uh, driver's yeah. name at? Yeah. I'm just giving him the paperwork. Okay. Here, you talk to him then. Ma'am, if he refuses to identify himself in this traffic stop, there's going to be an issue. Sir? Uh huh. He is identifying as a national of the nuclear power states. As you know, that removes him from your jurisdiction. Uh, I, it doesn't matter who he identifies as, he's operating a motor vehicle in the state of Florida, ma'am. This is the thing that I just don't get. However you decide to interpret the law, if you're driving a vehicle on a road in any country, you're supposed to have the proper paperwork. It doesn't matter who you identify as, or if you come from Canada, Venezuela, or Timbuktu. The officers have the right to pull you over and check if you have the necessary paperwork that proves you're authorized to operate the vehicle and that the vehicle is in working order. But the woman on the phone obviously disagrees and claims otherwise. Ma'am, so this is what this is what's going on. 
the, the tag on his vehicle does not appear like it's it's proper back to any state. So it appears the vehicle's unregistered. Then on top of that, I come up here, I'm asking for his identification documents and he's handing me a stack of the papers instead of a driver's license. So I'm concerned he might be driving without a driver's license and his vehicle might be unregistered. What? Yeah. Okay, your where's your, what's your, your name, boss? Right Sir, what's your name? Everything, right here. Can I see your name, please? Right here. Where? Right here. Just point to it. Right there. Where, where's, which, where's your name, sir? I don't right see there. you. Are you the postmaster? That's what yep. it says, postmaster? Yes, I am the postmaster. Are, which, so is your first name Mark or your last name Mark? No. So nothing on here has right your name? There. Right there. It's your destiny first Mark? Name. Destry? Yep. Is that how I'm saying yep. it? And what's your last name, boss? I can't see it. Right there, Wagerman. Wagerman? What's your date of birth, sir? It's all right there. It's not I'm on not there. not telling me anything. All right, well, this is the thing. If we cannot properly identify you, then it could be a potential issue for us coming up. Oh, yeah. Another thing about these sovereign citizens is that they make up new names for themselves. I guess that's a way to get off the grid and be untouchable by the government. But it's all in vain. You heard the cop. If they can't identify him, he's going to jail anyway. Uh, well, that's fine. He doesn't necessarily have to talk to me, but he does have to obey my lawful commands. Hey, Murphy. Why is he looking at my stuff for? This is part of his job. Hey, Murphy, can you just switch with me real fast? Lieutenant Who? Lieutenant Who? What, what, Lieutenant Who? Lieutenant Who? I think she been trying to say Galarza. Yeah. Right, just hold on right here. I just got to look at something real fast. Yes, sir. The officer checks in on the vehicle and finds out it's registered to Laura Lynn Nabosny, who lives in Lake Helen. The registration had expired back in 2022, so at least they have something to go on. As he returns to the vehicle, you can still hear the woman on the phone, and she's still regurgitating the same old lines. All right, sir. This is kind of where we're at. So I checked the... Uh, Hang on, hang on, Michelle. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Michelle, Michelle, hang on. So this is kind of where we're at. So I checked the VIN. The car is currently, looks like it's unregistered. So if you don't have, do you have a Florida driver's license or a driver's license out of another state that I can check to ensure that you're a licensed driver? Right there is all I got. Okay, right there. well, there's a problem. So I tried to search you up under this. I can't find anybody, you know, I can't find you. So if I can't verify that you're, you have a valid driver's license, then how am I supposed to let you drive off? She's coming. Uh, that's not gonna. Here. That's not gonna change anything. He's saying I gotta have a valid driver's license. To which to operate a motor vehicle in the state of Florida, yes, sir. Okay, you're at uh, Catalina and Howland. Yeah. Okay, sir. It's a, it's a simple question. Do you have a valid driver's license? Right there, all my papers I got. Okay. You can hear the anguish in that sigh. It's clear that this officer had previous run-ins with sovereign citizens, and I'd say he doesn't like them very much. Neither do I. What do you think about them? Does any of it make sense to you? It doesn't even make sense to the suspect. Notice the confused look on his face as he listens to Michelle jabber over the phone. Okay. Does that make sense? She not at all. Destry, hop on out. I'm not, why, why do I need to get out of my car? Have I done something wrong? Wait, whoa, 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 before you drag me out of the car, what have I done? Hop out of the car. Have I done something wrong? You're failing to, re you're failing to identify yeah. yourself? I, I, that's not a, that's not a lot, that's not a misdemeanor, it's not a lot. Hey, hi, don't get in my car. What are you guys doing? What's this, they're jerking me out of the car, Michelle. Get out. They're getting me out of the car. Yep. All right, all right, I'm getting out. All right, I'm getting Stop out. Pulling away I'm from getting me. out. You guys are jerking me around. You guys are jerking me around. Look at him. I got you. All right. I'm not jerking around. Okay. Now you're under arrest, buddy. Damn. We're not doing anything. What's the place? That's very nice. You guys are jerking me around. I don't hear much folks. Walk over to the car, man. Figure this all out, sir. Well. Not to spell my, show my ID, it's not a terrible offense. You tell me. Not an ID state Separate here. your feet, boss. Not an ID state here. 
And I don't, I don't go for certain seats. Stop bucking on me, please. It's not registered. Just stay out of my wallet. No. It's not. Stay out of my wallet. Everything's coming out your pocket. No, no. Hey, stay switch out of my I don't, I don't accept. You might not accept it, but no, it doesn't no, mean it's not happening. You guys are legally f***ing searching me for no f***ing reason at all. None. Well, that sort of went smoothly, but do you remember at one point this guy said she's coming? Well, she was indeed on the way and about to arrive any moment, but these officers have had enough stupidity for one day and they weren't going to take any more. Okay. Do you, yes. Do you want to talk to him or not? If not, we're going to get him out of here. We're trying to give you the keys. Hey, what? Hey, watch your back. I have a phone number for him. Unlock this door now. No, okay. I'm not gonna unlock. You get out. We break it. Open the door. No. Yes, so. Now get out. Get out. Get out of the car. Down goes another sovereign citizen. These Florida cops aren't playing games, I can tell you that. In the end, Detry was arrested and charged with driving an unregistered motor vehicle, driving with a suspended, revoked license, and resisting an officer without violence. The woman who arrived later was Laura Lynn Nabosny, the owner of the blue pickup. Instead of picking up the keys and leaving, she was arrested on charges of battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting an officer with violence. Okay, enough with the mushy stuff. Let's get back on track and follow police officers as they spot a reckless driver. They pull the vehicle over and find 18-year-old Avery behind the wheel, and she reeks of alcohol. How are you doing tonight? Hi. Good for your license. Yeah. You're my registration. Are you still living on Lake Monterey? Yeah. Okay. Is the uh, vehicle registered to you? Um, it's registered to my dad. To your dad? Do you want my registration? Yes. I'm so sorry. What is my registration supposed to look like? I know I have it, but I just have it. It's a piece of paper that uh, your sticker would come on as for the vehicle registration. As Avery fumbles with the papers, the officer explains she made several lane changes without a turn signal. The officer checks her papers and then returns to make sure she's fit to drive. All right, Avery. Medical conditions that affect your ability to drive this car? Yeah. Have you taken any prescription medications? Birth have, control. Have we had any legal <laughs> to put it on? Right. How much alcohol have we had tonight? Yeah, huh? I've none. You've had none? Okay. How much alcohol have you had tonight? None? Is there a reason that I would smell an odor of an unknown alcoholic beverage coming from? No, do you smell one? that I know of. I'm pretty blind when I read a couple of um, books online, like on my phone. That's it. Well, that was quite original, but I think she'll have to do better than that. Even if we disregard reckless driving and the smell of booze, her wobbly eyes and slightly slurred speech are dead giveaways. So my guess is there's an incoming field sobriety test. My dad is out of town and house sitting for him because he has animals. Based on everything that I've seen, all right, I want to request for you to perform the roadside task just to dispel any suspicion that I had that you're driving under an influence tonight. All right, are you willing to perform the roadsides? What is that? You really get out? It's uh, standardized field sobriety uh, roadsides. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I take off my um, boots because I'm wearing? Yes, we'll, we'll, let's do that over uh, over here. Yeah. I can do it in the booth if you like. If you feel comfortable, uh, I can do it. Okay. You're good. You're good. All right. Well, what, this is what I need you to do. Come, come back over here. We're not walking yet. Stand right where my light is and just face me. 
All right. Do you have any problems with your eyes that aren't corrected by the glasses? Um, I've never got tested for glasses. Uh, I don't you... know. It's harder for me to read books. Um, I read a lot of books, and it's, I see blurry, but that's, that's about it. Do you have contacts in? No, I've never been tested for the eye. All right. Have you been in an accident today? Not today. Have you uh -huh. been to a doctor or a dentist today? Recently? Yeah. All right. All right. What I need you to do, we're going to put her feet together. The officer proceeds to check Avery's eyes, and you can see her wobbly stance as she fails to follow the pin with her eyes only. She then fails the walking test, and even after removing the boots, she proceeds to fail the stand on one leg and count test. Then comes the close your eyes and touch your nose test, but you probably guessed it already. She fails that one as well. It's time for the officer to put some pressure, and she crumbles pretty fast. Okay, so how much alcohol have we had? Um, my friend Sal, who I was with, had a, had a Corona Light, and that's all I drank in. I had his Corona Light because he didn't want it. That's all I've had. When did you yeah. finish that? Um, it was when we first went out, so probably around like 9.45, 10. That's when you finish it? 10. 10, 10.30, 10, around 10. Okay. All right, this is what we're going to do. We have to turn around. We're going to go with little things. I'm going to place under arrest for driving under the influence. I'm going to transfer you to West Palm Beach to request a breath sample to determine alcohol content. All right, do you understand? You can see her world is just falling apart. A DUI arrest might seem inconsequential to some, but for a seemingly innocent 18-year-old girl like Avery, it must sound horrific. She's already started wincing, but the unraveling will begin when she's placed in the patrol vehicle and left alone. Overreacting much? I mean, it's evident this young woman is going through some emotional turmoil, and I bet she never expected her night to go this way. But you know what they say, everyone's a hero until they get smacked in the face. And Avery just got smacked a little bit. Even so, from my perspective, she's blowing it out of proportion. But then again, I'm not an 18-year-old girl. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong about this. Because you wanted to go see your boyfriend doesn't give a shit about you, God. You, please, please, please. <laughs> Okay, now I'm glad the privileged white girl got to go to jail. I kind of feel it might be a good lesson for her. 
Let me know if you agree or if you think I'm being too harsh on her. Thanks for joining me on this journey as we looked at some of the most painful traffic stops. Some of them ended in physical pain, others in psychological turmoil. No matter how you look at it, it seems that when an arrest happens, someone always ends up hurt one way or another. Join me next time when we bring you more encounters with the men and women in blue.